I'm really excited to welcome Matt Dollinger to the show today. His real estate career has spanned almost the last two decades in a tremendous amount of different facets. He's what I call a modern day real estate renaissance man. You worked for Trulia. Yes. Before it went public. Yes. And before the merger with Zillow. Is merger the right word that I'm supposed Acquisition. to be using? Acquisition. I want to see if you are now, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> the disclosure time. I'm guessing that we are enough years past any types of disclosure issues, correct? Yeah, 100%. Um, what are the secrets that companies like Truly and Zillow don't want consumers to know? Zillow, I'm just going to use Zillow as a blanket for okay. most of the portals. I mean, you've got Realtor.com, you've got Homes.com, you've got Zillow. Those are the big three that are still in existence today. The portals, uh, the way that they were originally created, they were an entertainment site. They used homes to attract people to entertain them, whether it be user-generated content about the neighborhoods, the photos. And this is even before like HGTV was in its like infancy. But it got people entertained. They love homes. America, we love our homes. We love good pictures and things like that. We entertain them to sell ad space. Okay, I'm going to jump in here because this is a really important note. Now, I've had the privilege as being your partner and wife of knowing this for a long time. And a lot of my clients have been educated on this. But these real estate portals yes. basically thought of themselves as not a real estate site, no, not a data site, not a transaction site, but entertainment sites. To sell advertising space. To sell advertising space, right? And it's just sure. like we talk about the media. They have to be a profitable business. But the thing to consider is that they found out when they were going through their, you know, their roadshow to go public and to become a publicly traded company. I mean, let's take a, like, let's, let's be honest here. They're not a not-for-profit. They're not, they're in the business of making money. And when they saw this ad space thing, this is the same time that Google went through this as well, is that they found out they can only sell so many, you know, home insurance sites and car sites and all the ancillary products that people want to do, like flashing. Remember back in the day, all the flashing ads that were on every site you had, they found out that they were going to actually cap this. And this was explained to me by this gentleman named Eric Oldfield. Eric, if you're watching, you, you, it's stuck in my head. But he used to run our ad division out at Trulia in New York. And he explained this to me. And there was like there was like a cap of what you could actually do because ads, nobody clicked on ads. So they had to shift. And, and this is a big thing when they went public. They had to shift and become something else. But to back up just a second. So the biggest part was the the, the was the Zestimate. OK, everybody knew the Zestimate. Here's the deep secret. The Zestimate has been the bane of my real estate career for many, many years. But the Zestimate is not supposed to be correct. No. Because if it was correct and it said your house is worth two hundred and ten dollars to two hundred and thirty thousand dollars here's your twenty dollars twenty thousand dollar window or something like that nobody's going to complain about it but if you tell somebody that their seven hundred thousand dollar house is worth five hundred and fifty or a million five they're either going to bellyache to their neighbors about it or they're going to brag that their house is worth 1.5 and they're going to tell other people and then other people this was an actual crafted strategy so just to get just to make huh. sure we're really really clear on this it's the same thing that we talk about with media 100%. right they need to invoke either excitement right. or anger, those two emotions, those create more engagement and more results. And you're saying this was something that was crafted so that when I'm in a negotiation and the agent says, hey, this estimate says this. And I say, well, I'm not allowed to say that on this podcast, right. but you're saying that that was all part of the. It was, it was let's say, I, I don't know if it was like as cryptically black flagging, but you know, whatever, it. but it's like, hey, do we really need to invest any more time into putting this and really dialing it down to the nth degree? No, because we've got enough people talking about it. People love it and hate it. And people go to it, flock to it to see where your house is, what your house is going to be worth. It's like the Cubs. They don't invest <laughs> any more money in the players because it's the well, most profitable baseball franchise out I, there. I don't know I don't know baseball enough but it's like I don't yeah, either but I know the business exactly but somebody's gonna making... somebody's gonna watch this and be like oh you don't know what you're talking about with baseball so I I full disclosure I know nothing and my grandfather is rolling over in his grave right now that I know nothing about but baseball. so here's the thing so at this point you know they went through and they were selling ad space and they were selling you know things to agents and brokers and things along those lines but they figured out that they had to pivot right they had to figure out how to make more money to a appease their investors and things like that. And so they changed to this agent lead model. 
And so that what consumers do not think about is that anytime they go to a site like a Zillow or anything like that, they are hunted from the moment they set foot on that website. They are hunted because they look at this, that that person is worth somewhere between 7,000 and whatever thousand dollars they could make by selling that lead to a real estate agent to close. Now, this is hugely profitable because this is when, you know, they had 6 million visitors per month or whatever it was, and they shifted this, this model, but they were sitting here and going out to a, first they did it by zip code and then they do it by share of voice per zip code and everything like that. So anytime you go into a zip code now and you're looking on Zillow and not to just make them out to be the bad guy because everybody does it, the brokerages do it as well. They're the powerhouse of it. Sure, but every brokerage does. If you go to Redfin, they're going to do exactly the same thing. Any brokerage site that you go to or anything like that, it's just like shopping for a car. They're going to take that lead and they're going to route it to a real estate agent to convert, to make money off of. Now, what the thing you don't, consumers don't typically think about with this is that a brokerage per se, they, they are, agents are on splits, right? So an agent who is not as experienced or something like that has a lower split. A, bro, a company makes more money off of a company or off of an agent that doesn't do as much business as yourself, right? Sure. We can say roughly that this has to do not only with experience, but quality of the agent as well. Let's go ahead and generalize that. I, I am not a real estate agent nor a lawyer or an attorney. That's my Todd Carpenter, you know, whatever. Disclosure. Disclosure, right. But so you're sitting here and you're trying to figure out and say, who are we going to make the most money out of, off of, to, to sell this to? And the answer is not me. No, it's not you. And so all these things, it's like, it's all about money. It's about taking these consumers and not saying, oh, we are going to partner you with the best agent who has the best reviews, who has the best closings and things like that. No, it's about, it's a pay to play mentality. I have no animosity towards any of these sites. They have done things on their website with technology and build out and things like that, that no brokerage or agent could ever do. Sure. It's amazing what they can do, but consumers need to keep that in the back of their head that they are a hunted commodity from the minute they set on a site, whether it be a car site, whether they be, you know, whatever, we are trying to convert you to closing to make money off of. No, and that's a great point um, because I think a lot of people forget that everything has a business model and everything needs to find a way to succeed. Like one of the things that I think is very misrepresented with regards to that that world is that we have um, not all properties are on portals like Zillow and Realtor.com and Trulia. App properties pays so that our, we're on there. But you also have to know as a consumer, if you click on there for more information, you're not going to the listing agent. You're going to that person who's paid the most money for that. Right. So once again, I think that that's an incredible, uh, incredible disclosure and a really important thing to note as we're moving forward is what is their, what is their ability? What is their target? What are they trying to do? As I said, I think that these portals serve a wonderful purpose. They do a great job. They display things well. They provide a great service. They're mobile friendly. Their yep. apps are fantastic. All I would tell a consumer is that regardless of where you are, if you're going on here and you find a home that you like, go through the traditional channels of referrals, vetting agents out, interviewing them and whatever, when you want to see that home. So essentially buyer beware. Buyer beware.